Hey, what's up guys, it's Sal here. And in this video, we'll talk about how you can protect your online privacy. And your online privacy simply means your right to keep sensitive data or information you've provided as a result of being online private. I'll be sharing five tips with you guys. And this video is brought to you by Business Day. Without further ado, let's get to the video. A lot of us are on social media and chances are you're watching this video on your phone. Wait, if you're watching this video on your phone, just click this poll right here and vote which device you're using. All right, back to my point. If you're using your phone, chances are you've got at least one or two of these apps installed. Most social media apps make money by delivering ads to you. And a popular social media platform, Instagram, delivers ads to you through a sponsored post. And you're not seeing that ad by chance. Instagram, which is owned by Facebook, knows what you like and knows what you actually like. Basically, they have some, some of your personal data and they can target you with ads related to your personal taste. These companies can do this because, you know, the use of their website is free. You are not paying to use Facebook or Twitter or any of these services. So by using their service, you're kind of agreeing to their terms and conditions and they can use the data you provide. It's also not a coincidence that sometimes you've had a discussion with your friend or a chat with your friend and the next thing you're getting or you're seeing ads based on that thing bro I've, um, bro i've been thinking of getting the new samsung galaxy buds do you know how much they are oh no no i don't i don't know a few moments later that's pretty much how well these companies know you but there's also a thing about privacy and in this video i'm going to show you how to protect yourself from getting breached and also how to protect yourself from identity theft first things first and this is an identity theft tip do not, I repeat, do not click on links that you know nothing about. And most importantly, do not sign up on any website with a lot of your personal information, especially if you don't see this padlock sign right to the side of it. And if you're signing to Gmail or social media and you don't see that sign, or if you're not signing through the app itself, run. The padlock sign is basically SSL, which is a security method or a certificate. It basically means that your information or any information you're giving that website is transmitted securely or in an encrypted fashion. Without that sign, what you're sending to that website is just plain text and anyone, anyone can get access to that data. You don't want people seeing your credit card information, do you? You, you really don't want that. At number two, permissions. Now, this is a privacy tip. Have you ever installed an app and it asks you to use permissions to use the camera or your microphone or basically any body part of your phone? Essentially, these apps have to ask for your permission to gain control of that feature. We're going to do two experiments and the second one was kind of shocking to me. For the first experiment, if you can try deleting and installing Instagram again, then try to upload the story after you've installed it. It will ask for your permission to use the microphone and your camera and other things. A lot of apps ask for permission to use your storage, your contacts, and even your location. Now, if you don't know these apps, there's no need to give any, them any information. You can simply just deny the request. Some apps run in the background, and if there's an app that has the permission to use your microphone in the background, chances are it could be listening to you. Do you doubt me? Well, hold on. There's a link in the description of this video. It's bit.ly slash Google My Activity. Now, if you click this link, you will see all your history. I saw my search history, my app history, every Google service I've used. Heck, I could even see my working pattern in 2015 when I was in university. And as if that was not already a lot, I could hear my voice recordings back in June and July when I mistakenly triggered the assistant. I don't even need to touch my phone. All I need to do is just say, hey Google, and it hears me and records my voice. Around luxury. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just hanging around. I've got here since like six o'clock. <laughs> My voice has been recorded on Google, stored on Google. But the good thing is that Google is really transparent about what it knows about you. And you can see that for yourself. You can even choose to delete some of the things there. And I feel like if you really if you think this is too much. DuckDuckGo is a different search engine that helps you search the internet privately without tracking and it only gives you ads based on what you searched for. Facebook recently had a scandal that made them go harder on privacy and all of that is evidenced in their apps and updates. For iPhone users, one thing you can do is turn off Siri's always listening feature from the settings and then Siri and search. Another thing is to go to the privacy section of your iPhone and click on microphone. There you see all the apps that have access to use your microphone while you're using it, you can simply turn that off. 
you can turn off anyone you feel is not important for android users this is a matter of going into each individual app and then getting permission in settings for instance on twitter i've only enabled storage permissions so i can save and upload pictures nothing else no other permissions at number three we want to be sure of how social we want to go and how public we want our social media presence to be i talked about securing your phone's privacy in the previous point and now i want to talk about securing your social media or your social media presence how public do you really want to make your social media accounts? Usually, these apps, as previously established in the previous point, they already know a lot about us. Now, we want to have to tailor what they know about us already and control how they use it. An account that is public is good if someone has their work online and they want to leave room for authenticity. Yes, open or public accounts get you opportunities you know, to network with future employers, future clients. That's fine. In the social media settings, you want to understand the privacy section very well. On an app like Twitter, you can go into the settings, privacy and safety, and there you see all the permissions that are granted and you can turn off anyone you want at will. Some of them may not even encourage you to use their product anymore. On Instagram though, most of their privacy tools are more like features. For example, you can make your account private, you can limit comments, you can do other things. And on Facebook, you can control your activity as well as how other pages react to your page. At number four, it's clearing your cookies and using a strong password. I feel like this is probably the most overlooked one and I've been guilty of this. Using a password like password or one, two, three, four, five, six is kind of crazy, right? It sounds weird. Well. According to UK's National Cyber Security Report, 23 million people use 123456 as their password. This was in April 2019. Stop it. Please stop it. Cookies. Cookies are another way your privacy could be breached. Simply put, a cookie is a file sent from a website to your computer to remember information about you and track any action that you've taken on that website. There are some annoying cookies from some e-commerce websites that already know what you've put in your cart and they follow you about everywhere on social media, even after you've purchased the item, like why? One way to overcome this is to clear your cookies regularly. There are also reports that talk about zombie cookies that come to life even after you've cleared them, but it still stands true. You just have to keep clearing your cookies from time to time. As far as passwords, using a password generator can help. Also using a service like LastPass, which stores all your passwords with a master password can help as well. At number five, or last but not least, we'll talk about internet service providers or your ISPs and virtual private networks or VPNs. From what I've seen, it's a common thing worldwide that there are few ISPs to choose from by country. ISPs in Nigeria include MTN, Airtel, Nine Mobile, Glow, that's all. They're pretty much the four horsemen for mobile internet services in Nigeria. In US, we've got Verizon, AT&T, Comcast. There are quite a few still. Did you know that your ISPs know every site you visited? Yeah, it's simple. You have to go through them to access the internet. That's what you're paying for. So it's very easy for your ISP to track your online activity and even your social media. Now, there are good results from this, like zero data usage on Facebook or WhatsApp or setting apps for some, which is nice. However, if you want to protect yourself, I always, always recommend using a VPN. I made a whole video about VPNs and I'll leave a link to that in the description or a card up above here. And as far as the basics, a VPN simply cuts that direct access that your ISP has to you and reroutes it before it gets to them. So they can't track you or what you're doing online. Essentially, you're anonymous. I've also got a lot of questions on how I can use services like Spotify, Amazon Prime, and that's because I use a VPN. With a VPN, I can literally be in the US even when I'm in Nigeria. And I can use almost any service that they have there in the US. And this is legal. I recommend you watch my videos on VPNs link below. As a bonus tip, I feel like this is a no brainer, but don't share personal information online. Don't share too much personal information online, like your family info, your exact location, your financial or medical history, or just personal information. Just don't share it because it's easy for people to steal, like your bank account number or something. You never know who is monitoring you on social media. And for someone like me, it's probably even worse. That's pretty much it for this video. If you like this video, please drop a like below and let me know in the comment section down below. Do you use a VPN and do you have any tips to stay safe online? Let me know in the comment section down below. Let's have a chat in the comments below. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon so you'll be notified when I drop a new video. Thank you for watching this one and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.